Hey everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Glenn, and today we're going to show you how to actually run a test using the metabolic cart here in the Applied Phys Lab at Louisiana Tech University. So if you've watched the previous video where we showed how to calibrate the met cart, uh, at this point we're just taking it to the next level, actually showing how to run and collect data. So number one, when we finish the calibration process, we are still on this screen. And if you just finished the calibration, this is where you should be. At this point, you need to go to File and Exit Calibration. When we do that, we come back to our main screen. Now we need to get ready to run our test. So the first thing we do, we come up here and we click on the Patient Archive Management button. It will bring up this screen. If we have a new subject, uh, we will click. Then we will put the last name in and click New. If we're trying to find somebody, or if we're trying to pull up an old test, we can do it right here by putting the same last name in or the ID code and pressing Find. So we're going to do a brand new test today, and we're going to use Mr. Bo Haynes to be our subject. So we'll put in his last name, and we will hit New. This screen will pop up. More often than not, it's better to use your LA Tech uh, email as your ID code. So, Bo, what is your LA Tech email? Uh, BWH. BWH. 025. 025. That will be his ID, his last name. Hey, no, Haynes. First name, Bo. Make sure that the sex is picked properly. His birth date. Ninety, and then uh, don't worry about messing with this right here. Always let that say 100. So we get that information in. We hit OK. It'll say a patient is already in the archive. Do you want to create a new patient ID? Since he already has run a test before, it brings this up. If it's somebody running it for the first time, you won't see this. However, we want to create a new test, so we'll just follow through with yes. So now we have him in the screen. Uh, then we go to next. No, nope, that's not correct. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. We go to okay. The next thing we do is we go to test. So we've already gone through the set of the patient up. Then we're going to go to execute a new test. So now we're going to put in his height and weight. Uh, Bo, how tall are you? Uh, five, eight and a half. So 68.5 inches. And how much do you weigh? 162. 162. So we get that information in. It should say, if you're doing a uh, metabolic test with the treadmill, it should say RMR with mask. That's the default setting. Then we want to make sure it's on the Cosmed treadmill, which it all automatically is. The next thing we want to do is have it go to the whatever protocol you're using. If you are starting with a brand new protocol, one that hasn't been used before, you'll click no one. For the purposes of this, we're going to use the standard Bruce protocol that's taught in most lab classes. We click Bruce. You'll also notice that they have a couple of bruises on the bike, miles per hour. We just want the standard bruise protocol right here. Next, where it says workspace, we want to go to user one. So it'll default to RMR, we click user one. After all of that's done, we click OK. Everything will filter through. And we will see this screen come up. So the next thing we need to do is we'll make our graphs. So we, you see this screen will naturally come up, then we click graph. There's two graphs we're gonna create. Our x-axis will always be the T, that's time. Our first one, we'll click the R, that stands for RER, so uh, essentially that's something that we need during the test, we click OK. Then we're gonna make one more, we go to graph again, we're gonna do T and we're gonna do the VO2 per kilogram, so we're gonna make sure that we get the relative VO2. We click OK. Now, to make it so we can see all these screens, we can click this button right here where it says Arrange Windows, and it will automatically arrange all these windows for us. One of the nice things you can do, you can organize them around if you'd rather have one screen in one place as opposed to the other. We can move them around, and even though they're not clean, we can hit that again, it'll rearrange them for us. So since we want to put this at the top, we'll bring this down here, this to the top. So I like having this screen at the top and then our graphs at the bottom. Once this is done, we are done with the computer for a few minutes. We're going to set our patient or our subject up for the test.
Over here, you will see our actual metabolic testing masks. If we zoom in close on one of the masks, if we flip it over, you'll see this is where the nose goes at the top. The chin rests right in here, like so. And we have a small and a large mask. For Bo, we know that the large mask is uh, going to fit a little bit better. If we get close, we can see right there, it'll say medium. The other mask will say small. So that way, if you have a hard time uh, visually seeing the difference, it will show it to you right there. We have the clips. You see our face mask here. We have our clips uh, clipped on the one side. We do this ahead of time to make it a little bit easier. And then we have the subject hold to their face. So Bo, if you'll hold that on there for me. Oh, wait, first thing we need to do is we need to put the piece in. So before we have them do that, we take our flow meter that we used in our previous calibration, and you'll see there's a kind of a ridge inside. If we zoom in close, you can see there's kind of a ridge inside of the mask. This kind of fanned part needs to fit right inside that ridge, and this can be tricky. It can take a few minutes. And again, it's always best if you can to try and do this before your subjects come in. Uh, it makes it so there, it doesn't take as much time. Let's try to turn it so that way the cords, when he's, if it's on his face, the cords are kind of facing this way. So now we're set up there nicely. So again, now, Bo, I'll have you hold this to your face there. And we'll take the headgear. We'll pull it around like so. So that way, and we want it nice and snug. If it's not snug, we run into an issue where there can be some uh, leakage in the mask and then we don't get the proper, so let's tighten this up a little bit, we won't get the proper readings. And this may take a little trial and error, we see there, how's that feel, is that kind of tight, feels okay? If they can breathe and they can feel their breath coming around the outside of the mask, that means it's too loose. So if we kind of turn you a little bit here, this is how they should be set up. Our flow meter is together, both pieces are in, all four connectors are nice and applied, and make sure the mask is not upside down, make sure that you don't have the wrong end of the tube placed into the mask, and everything looks good just like this. So from here we're going to move our subject to our treadmill. So if you'll go ahead and step up on there for me. We want to make sure that we are keeping account of the cords, we don't want them to get caught anywhere. We'll kind of drape the cords right here. Something that's helpful is if you keep a piece of athletic tape can kind of tape the cords down that will help the subject uh, because when they're moving around now the cords aren't bouncing around everywhere as much it's not necessary but it's nice if you have it available so we have them wait there for a minute if we look over here if we come back to our screen we will see that since he's put the mask on it's starting to read his breaths we can see his uh, relative vo2 max we can see his RER uh, we can see a lot of other numbers uh, but this is how we know that it's actually recording properly and it's working. Now, this is very important whenever we do any kind of treadmill test. We need to explain the safety parameters to the subject. Bo, what I want you to do, I want you to straddle the treadmill with your feet on either side. I want you to know that during the test, if you ever need to stop immediately, you can grab these handles and you can put your feet on either side. I would rather you do that than fall off the back. Because of these cords attached to you and this attached to your head, I'd much rather you straddle it and get off the belt than go off the back just because then we prevent any injury. The other things that we want to tell them is that it's a graded test. We want to let them know also that their universal cut sign is this method right here. So obviously they can't communicate as easily with the mask in their mouth. They can't talk freely. So it's really easy if we let them know this, then whenever they're done and ready to stop the test, we see that sign, we know to hit stop, and it makes everything run a little bit more smoothly. So now we have everything set up, he's ready to go. Our breath by breath analysis is working perfectly. So if we zoom in here on our screen, we see our start button right here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is get our mouse ready. If you're running this test with another person, this is where you would have them get the treadmill started. So Bo, since you're familiar with the treadmill, and you can zoom in right there, uh, I want you to hit the on button on the treadmill and I just want you to bring the treadmill to about three miles an hour and go ahead and straddle the belt like you were. Go ahead and straddle the belt with your feet on either side. 
So we're gonna get the treadmill started. Bring it up to three miles an hour. And I'm gonna tell the subject to grab those handles and whenever they're ready to start walking on the treadmill carefully. So Bo, whenever you're ready, you can start walking. And you can see it's moving pretty slow for your standard individual. He's gonna start walking. We have him in the warm up phase. Depending on what your test is, uh, it will depend on when you actually start. So we, we're fine here, we have him moving. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna hit the start button right here. When we click that, it resets our screen. It's gonna go and now we've officially started the test. So every 30 seconds, we're gonna see new numbers pop up here. Our graphs will start to take shape. And what we'll do is we'll have him, we'll time him about five minutes. We'll have him stay at this, uh, at this speed. So that way you can kind of see, you can kind of we'll watch everything go through. We'll watch the first couple come up. Um, and you can see on the side of your screen, it'll give you kind of your real time data. It'll give you your data across here. So we see his VO2 about 20.23. Uh, this is where we're gonna be monitoring for his VO2 max. So if we were running a, a true max test, we would bring the incline and the grade up every so often. We'd watch his VO2 climb. So Bo, what I want you to do, go ahead and increase that to a, a faster walk for you. Not where you're jogging, but where you're at a fast walk. So we'll see he's increased to about 3.8, about four miles an hour. So he's gone up a mile an hour. So we see that for the first minute, he was pretty stable, but within one, but now we've purposely upped his speed. We should see his VO2 to start to increase here on the next one. And again, we're in 30 second window, so we give it a few seconds, so it'll start to come up. We'll give it a few seconds here. This is a good way to track how your patients or your clients are doing. If we increase the speed, but their VO2 goes down, something has gone wrong. So we now we see very directly, we've increased the speed, his VO2 has gone up. And if we were running a true test, then over time we would see that slowly start to climb and climb and climb and climb till our subject reached fatigue, he couldn't go anymore, and then we'd have a true max test. So Bo, what we'll have you do, we'll pretend that you've gone all the way through the test. Um, I'm going to act as the technician over here. I'm going to slow you down. You give me the cut sign. So he's done. I'm going to slow him down to a slow walk. We always want to allow our subjects to recover. If they're not able to recover, we can have other issues. We allow them to walk slowly as long as they feel comfortable. We hit stop test over here. It'll say in current test. We clicked right up there. Now we hit yes. The test is now done and complete. We need to focus on our subject. So, uh, Bo, you feel okay? Are you ready to stop exercising? We say he says yes. I ask him to grab the handles, straddle the belt like you started. We hit stop. And then the first thing we want to do from there is get him disconnected. So we connect this there, right here, bring it around, and we take it off. And this can just be set right here in the treadmill for now. We can, we'll show you how to clean it in a minute. That's set there. When we come back to our screen, after we hit stop test, this screen will naturally come up. We won't see anything anymore. We can hit data, and that's where we will see our screen. So the test we just did will be this one right here. Let's see where are we at. I guess here. Whatever the test we just did, we hit OK. We'd see the data from the test we just ran, and then uh, you could do a lot of things here. You could go. You could actually print out your data. Um, you could save it as a PDF. There's a lot of different things you can do. As of now, your test is done. You can see that if we, if this was a true test, as VO2 max would have actually been 26.69. And that concludes the VO2 max test. So now that the testing portion is completed, we need to quickly show how to clean everything up. So Bo, if you'll grab that mask over there. We'll see Bo grab the mask. He'll take the flow meter out. Nice and simple. Set it to the side so it doesn't fall on the floor so nothing happens. He'll disconnect the face mask 
from the actual headgear. And then he'll grab an alcohol swab from the top of the cabinet there. And we will clean out the face mask. We want to make sure that we clean these in between each use uh, because obviously with the breathing inside, we want to make sure that it's nice and clean for each subject. So he'll take it, he'll flip it over, and he'll clean out the whole inside with the alcohol swab and we'll allow it to sit out and dry before use again. That's how you run a t uh, max test on our, on our metabolic cart. Obviously we didn't go through the full max test protocol. Every protocol will be a little bit different. Uh, but if so, if you have specific questions or concerns, make sure you contact one of the faculty members, one of the GAs, one of your instructors, uh, so that way they can help you answer any questions you may have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.